Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's doing great today. What a, what a blessing it is to be alive. This is the day the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I'm rejoicing in it, and I'm thankful. God is so good to us. He watches over us, cares for us, protects us, leads us, guides us, directs us. And I'm thankful to be a child of the King and to know who I belong to. And we just appreciate you joining with us on Thursday night in the Word. Um, we're going to have probably a shorter lesson tonight because I just want to kind of set the foundation for going forward the next several weeks. Hopefully in the next several weeks, we're going to have some guests with us. Um, I know that for a fact, uh, Anthony Brown's going to be with us um, here probably uh, next week. And then also uh, Pastor David Nichols is going to be with us um, here shortly. And so um, we're just looking forward to having some folks on with us. If, you, if you're keeping track of what we're doing, we are, we are doing a study from Hebrews 6, um, verses 1 and 2. We, we've talked about before how that um, when we become new Christians, we're babes in Christ. And so our nutrition and exercise is important for us, making sure that we have a good, solid foundation in our lives, as well as when somebody's born in the natural. Um, those are key things for a baby to have, nutrition and exercise, that that baby's organs and muscles and things are established to help the child grow, to become strong, to have um, good health and um, good bone structure. And so we also, as Christians, need to make sure that we have a good, solid foundation. And so what is it that we need to have in order to have that good, solid foundation? The Bible teaches us that there is the milk that needs to come first, milk before meat. And so when we look at Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, um, he says there, therefore, leaving the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. These six foundational milk of the word is important for a Christian to have established in their lives so they can build upon that foundation, the meat of God's word, going on to things like predestination, going on um, to different things like the order of Melchizedek and the priesthood and understanding where and who we are in Christ. But first and foremost, so that we don't find ourselves in error, we have to have a good solid foundation in our hearts and in our lives to make sure that we're growing up in the in, in faith and also we're having a foundation laid that won't crumble as we go along a lot of christians today they're they do good as long as everything's going good but when the storms of life and the bible teaches us the storms of life are going to come difficulties trials tests problems we're not exempt from all those things when they come you have to have a good foundation in order to stand. And so we we actually started out a little ahead of, ahead of ourselves, if you want to know the truth, because of what we were going through in our country, uh, in the world. And we started off on faith toward God. And last week we finished faith toward God with a supplemental treatise on faith, talking about um, the condition that we're in right now and how people's faith is being shipwrecked and how important it is for us to establish and, and be established in faith and that faith would mature that faith would develop and grow to where we would then be um, out doing the things that Jesus has commanded us that we would go do we don't want to have a weak faith we don't want to have timid faith we don't want to be wishy-washy or blown to the right or to the left but we want to be on a solid foundation and I, I, I honestly believe that today in the church that is a one of the biggest problems. People are blown about by every wind of doctrine. People are blown about by the cunning and craftiness of um, the enemy who lies in wait to deceive. Uh, First Peter tells us, Satan, like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. First John, or, or John 10, 10 tells us, the thief comes not but to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. 
And so we know the enemy is out there and we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and the rulers of darkness in this present world. We battle, we fight the fight of faith. The Bible says we press toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Christianity is not just a by happenstance or, you know, uh, growth doesn't come just because. We have to be purposeful in growing our own spiritual lives. We have to be walking hand in hand with God, working on our own development. It's You're not just going to develop. You're not just going to mature. It's going to take some work on your part. And that work is believing God and resting in what he's done, but also being a true disciple, a disciplined learner of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study to show yourself approved. Study. He says, study, not just read, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. A lot of Christians today are living off a twisted doctrine. They know a little bit, just enough to be dangerous, but yet they don't know enough to really be established in the faith. And, and we here at Bethesda have a passion, a desire to help people become established in the word and to study it and to learn it and to live it and to walk it out. That's what we want to do. And, and so we're getting ready to embark on um, another aspect of those doctrines in Hebrews 6, 1 and 2 called the doctrine of baptisms. If you've noticed, baptisms there is plural. And we're going to talk about um, the baptism in water. We're going to talk about um, baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we're going to also talk about the baptism of fire. And we hope that you stay with us and join us um, for these ongoing studies. But tonight, I just want to kind of lay a little foundation um, of the doctrine of baptisms. Um, it's, it's expedient that we notice, as I just read in Hebrews 6, uh, two, that the word baptism appears in a plural form, which indicates there's more than one baptism. And we're going to discuss the definition in the Greek word for baptism, the three different baptisms, and begin our study of water baptism. But first, we want to talk about uh, the definition of baptism. The word for baptism in the Greek is baptizo, which comes from the root word bapto, meaning to dip or immerse in a substance and take out again. Whenever the word baptizo or bapto appeared in the New Testament, it was not referring to water or spirit baptism. It was translated in the New, in the New Testament as it, it, uh, water or spirit baptism, and it was translated to dip. Luke 16, 24 says, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. John 13, 26 says, Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simeon, or Simon. Revelation 19, 13 says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The ending is produces a verb with a causative meaning. Therefore, the word bat baptize means to call something to be dipped. This word is found in the Septuagint in 2 Kings 5.14 concerning Naaman, who went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River. Baptizo is a Greek word. When the King James Version of the Bible was being written in the early 17th century, King James commanded that the word be left untranslated because he feared a controversy with the bishops who could not agree amongst themselves as to the method or form of baptism. Although the kings were absolute monarchs, they still had to answer to the bishops on religious matters. The word baptize is the English version of baptizo. Whenever we see the, this word in our Bibles, we need to remember that it is a Greek word and not an English word. Therefore, it would be totally correct to substitute the English uh, transition or the translation to dip or immerse every time we see 
untranslated word baptize in our Bible. So when we see baptize, we would be able to say to dip or immerse because that is the true meaning. It, that, these things are very important. You say, what's so important about that? It's very important because we want to follow with what Jesus' example was as he was baptized. And there's a lot of different uh, confusion among churches today when it comes to baptism. And so we want to make sure that we have it right. This would do away with a lot of controversy today as to the meaning of baptism with regards to method or form. Hebrews 6.2 makes it very clear that there is more than one type of baptism to be taught in the doctrine or teachings of Christ. In, in the scriptures in Ephesians 4, um, 4 through 6, it says, There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, our God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. When we talk about this Hebrew, or Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, it does not contradict this. Um, this passage is dealing with the unity of the Spirit, and there is only one Spirit baptism. We know that the Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ. We know that the Spirit, when we're born again, the Spirit of God baptizes us into His body, the universal body of Christ. Everyone who gives their heart and life to Jesus Christ is baptized into one body by one spirit. And we know that, that that's the general church. We're, we're baptized into the general body. I also believe that the Holy Spirit leads and directs us to be a part of a local expression of that body. Nobody should be out here on their own. Nobody should be just drifting around from place to place. Everybody should be praying and asking the Holy Spirit that he would lead, guide, direct them into a place to where he wants to set them in a local expression of the body of Christ so that they can mature, grow, have accountability, be under authority, and develop the gifts and callings of God upon their lives. So it's important for us to know that there is only one spirit baptism, and that baptism is into the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10.2 says, and, we're, and, and talking, about, talking about the children of Israel, and that says they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And so when we look at uh, 1 Corinthians 10.2 makes that reference of two baptisms that happened in the, in the comparison, Moses was the type of Christ. The baptism in the cl cloud was pointing to being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And the baptism in the sea was pointing to being baptized in water. We can begin to see these things at work even in the very early stages of Scripture. We know that the Bible speaks concerning Noah and the ark. And it says, even though the ark was a place of safety, they were saved, the Bible says, by the waters of baptism. The waters baptized them or took them away from that that was vexing their soul. Baptism is first referenced in the New Testament in the ministry of John the Baptist. John's baptism was one of repentance to prepare the way of Jesus. Um, in Acts 19.4 it says, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Also in Luke 3, 3 through 8, it says, And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able, to, that God is able of these stones to raise up children 
unto Abraham. Now that Jesus has come, this baptized, that this baptism is long, no longer valid. However, repentance is still valid. The baptism of John, baptism under repentance, is no longer va valid. Jesus has come, and now he is the one who uh, has made the way for our repentance. It is the only way to prepare the way for Jesus to come into our lives and makes it possible for us to be dipped or baptized into the blood of Jesus our Passover lamb, 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So here we are, we're baptized into um, Jesus Christ, and the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all our sins. That blood of the sacrificial lamb is still paying the price for our sin today past, present, and future. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, washed. All of our sins have been washed away. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. We have all been baptized into one body and we have all been made to drink of one spirit. When we read John 5, 7, and 8, and, 8, it, and, and we read those scriptures and we, and we can see um, in 1 John 5, uh, 7, 6 through 8, it says, this, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Being immersed or dipped in the blood of Jesus makes it possible for us to be in the Father. Makes it possible for us to be in the Father. Jesus said, I am the way, truth, and life. He also said, I am the door. What was, what was he the way to? What was he the door of? A lot of times we want to say, well, uh, it's the kingdom. Well, yes, it is absolutely that we are part of the kingdom. But the way that he was making for us and the door that he was being for us to walk through was that we could be then baptized or translated into a life with the Father. That is our desire, is to be with the Father. Jesus Christ made all of those things possible. We have been baptized into the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and being baptized in the Spirit places us in the Holy Spirit. The water is the environment that we're baptized into. That environment we're baptized into is the Son and the Word. And the baptizer, when we're, when we're baptized in the water, is the Father. When we talk about the Spirit, the environment that we're baptized into is the Spirit, and the baptizer is the Son. Remember, above the heaven and earth line, the Father, there's three that agree, the Father, the Word, the Son, Holy Spirit. On this earth, there's three that agree, the blood, the blood, the water, and the Spirit, which all three we have been baptized into. By the Spirit, into the Father. By the, by the Father, into the Son and the Word. By the um, Spirit, into, our, into the Spirit, by the Son. And so we find ourselves with that um, life that has been baptized into the things of God. And we have been um, consumed or we are being consumed by that that we have that we dwell in the old testament shadow can be seen in israel's deliverance from egypt to the promised land blood water and spirit each baptism is to be a total and transitional experience because it involves the whole person and marks a passing out of one stage or realm of experience into another we are moving from place to place to place we are going higher and deeper with the things of God. 
Uh, initially, we start out, the Holy Spirit draws us, the Holy Spirit regenerates us, and the Holy Spirit baptizes us with the blood of Jesus Christ into the Father. Then we move from that because until you have repented of your sins and be wa been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, water baptism does you absolutely no good. The Bible teaches us in Acts, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Repentance comes first. Being baptized by the Spirit into the blood of Jesus, moving into the Father, is the first thing that has to take place in our life. And then we should, out of obedience to the command of God, then move toward water baptism, that we would be baptized in water. And we should desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, directed by the Holy Spirit, and in the power, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. God is calling us to experience all these things in our lives. When we begin next week, we're going to talk about um, the doctrine of uh, going with the doctrine of baptism. We're going to talk about start talking about water baptism, how important it is. It's not just a it's not just a church ordinance. It's not just a good conscience toward God, even though that is true. The scripture tells us that it's an outward expression of a good conscience toward God, but it's not all that it is. We want to talk about the purpose of water baptism. What is the purpose of water baptism? Every single person that truly has given their life to God should desire in their heart to fulfill the scriptures. If we have truly been born of God, we will desire to do the things that God has directed us to do. What his scripture teaches us to do. We do not have to fully understand it. It's not an intellectual thing. Jesus said he's made the gospel of the kingdom so simple that even a child could understand it. You know, you hear people a lot of times, well, I got to process this. I got to think this through. I got to, I got to really think about all this. No, listen, Jesus said it. I believe it. And it's true. It doesn't mean that down the road, I don't want to know more and more and more about it doesn't mean that I don't want to study to prove out what I am believing or what somebody's teaching me because I do but yet we have too many people sitting around waiting and waiting and waiting until they can sort it out intellectually and I'm just telling you the Bible teaches us that what we are to do is we are to live by faith not by intellect not that we are to follow the blind and be led into a ditch, but yet God wants us to have faith and believe what God's word says. And if God's word tells us that we are to do something and directs us and we can rightly divide the scripture to know that it's telling us the truth, that it's true for us, then we need to make sure that we um, do the things that God's asking us to do. And that's why baptism is so important. And we want to, we look forward to talking about that. I, I want to say that I appreciate you being with us today. I know it was a short uh, little clip, but next week we're going to start getting into, again, like I said, baptism in water. So God bless you. We love you. Um, I pray the Holy Spirit touch your heart, touch your life, draw those that do not know you. Send conviction, Holy Spirit, upon lives. Draw them in, I pray. Touch those that have become lukewarm, that are indifferent, whose faith is failing, whose faith is weak who has their eyes on circumstances and people, and God, let them be lifted up so that they can see the truth of your word. Let them be sanctified by your word. Your word is truth. Let them be purified. Let their hearts rejoice in Christ our Savior. Father, we thank you so much for all you're doing, and we ask you to bless in Jesus' name. Amen.